This is Ritesh Srinivasan and welcome to my channel. In this video, let's look at reference resolution with respect to NLP and how contextual rephrasing in Google Assistant is used for reference resolution for queries in Google Assistant. If you have a sentence like, Anna is passionate about natural language processing, she reads and blogs about it often. It is easy for a human to identify that she in the second sentence refers to Anna and it refers to natural language processing. So discourse in the context of NLP refers to a sequence of sentences occurring one after the other. There will obviously be entities that are being talked about and possible reference to those entities in the discourse. Okay, so this is a discourse. Now what is reference resolution? So reference resolution is the task of resolving such references. Reference in NLP is a linguistic process where one word in a sentence or discourse may refer to another word or entity. So for example, Anna, natural language processing are your possible entities, right? If you have this discourse, even UT Dallas and she, her are references to the entity Anna. The institute over here is the reference to UT Dallas. Okay. Now let's go to the Google Assistant use case. So if there is a query to Google Assistant like who wrote Romeo and Juliet, it answers back saying that William Shakespeare. Now there is a follow up query. Where was he born? The he is referring to William Shakespeare without the need to explicitly mention him. Or if someone mentions Python in a sentence, you can use the context of the conversation to determine whether they are referring to us snake or a computer language. If this is not done properly, right? If a virtual assistant cannot robustly handle context, then it becomes difficult for the user because the user has to repeat over here saying that where was William Shakespeare born? I am referring to Python, the programming language and not the snake in the follow up queries, right? So how is Google assistant handling these, you know, kind of, uh, you know, referring context? which are uh, defined in the previous queries and answers. Okay, so Google makes use of machine, Google Assistant makes use of machine learning advances. It rephrases a user's follow-up query to explicitly mention the missing contextual information, thus enabling it to be a answered as a standalone query. Okay, so that is the, so it focuses on the short-term conversation history to do this. So it kind of rephrases the entire uh, query basically. So if uh, in the previous example, you have Romeo and Juliet, right? One may ask up follow questions like when. So the assistant recognizes this as it is referring to both Romeo and Juliet and the answer from the previous query, William Shakespeare and can rephrase when to when did William Shakespeare write Romeo and Juliet? Okay. So this is more an explicit standalone query. So the first query was about who wrote Romeo and Juliet. The answer is William Shakespeare. So the next question is that where uh, was he born? There is some answer. And then the third question is when? So this when is converted using this contextual history to when did William Shakespeare write Romeo and Juliet? And then the system is able to answer these queries. Okay. So here are the different types of contextual queries which are possible. Okay. So if there is an initial query, who is the wife of Superman? Right. And if there is a follow up query, when did they get married? Obviously, they refers to Superman and his wife, which is Lois Lane. Okay. So the rephrased query is this. When did Superman and Lois Lane get married? Okay. So this Lois Lane is kind of implicit from this, but this is your rephrased query for which you can get an answer. But if there is a question again says, when did they find the Titanic? This is an unrelated query. So there is no rephrased query. So it is they over here doesn't refer to you know, the wife of uh, Superman and his wife. Okay, so this is a pronoun kind of uh, uh, reference. You are trying to find a reference for the pronoun over here, which is they. Now, the second case is that when there is implicit reference, for example, like what is Chicago's tallest building? So the next question is what's the population? So here it is implicit. You are referring to basically Chicago's population. So the rephrase query becomes what is the population of Chicago? What's the height? So this is, you know, based on contextual queries, 
previously associated with Chicago, they have identified that probably the user over here is referring to the will list tower. So there is this refreshed query over here. Suppose there is what's the date, then it is a unrelated query. Okay. So then here there is about refinement. This is about see if the initial query was my photos of Esther, the ones from the wedding, the ones over here is about my photos of Esther from the wedding. This is the refreshed query. Okay. Similarly, argument replacement. How many episodes in this season four of this is us? If the next follow up query is what about season five? So here, uh, you know, season four should be replaced with season five. And you know, it is of this particular series. Okay. That is what has happened over here. Similarly, disambiguation. So for example, the starry night, irises. Okay. So basically this is a painting, right? So here it identifies this and it adds Van Gogh over here, which is semantically related to the initial query so that you get relevant results. Similarly, this is about date. Okay. When is Thanksgiving? Remind me the day before to buy a turkey. So you have to identify the day before Thanksgiving. And that is how the rephrasing is done over here. Remind me on November 23 to buy a turkey. Okay. So these are the different types of, uh, you know, you can say reference challenges over here, uh, pronoun, ref uh, what you call a reference resolution. These are different types of reference resolution. And this is the refreshed query for these scenarios. Okay. Now, what is the system architecture over here? The idea is that you, the refreshing system generates refreshing candidates by using different types of candidate generators. Basically, it has to generate some kind of uh, rephrasing candidates. Out of the candidates, you need to do a scoring to identify the most appropriate candidate which can be fed to the system to get a uh, answer, right? To get a relevant uh, reply, right? So this is the idea. You have the query plus context. You have a candidate gener uh, generator and based on that candidate scoring is done to get a refreshed query. Okay. So how can you generate these candidates? So either you can use analysis of linguistic structure of the queries, use basically grammatical and morphological rules, replacement of pronouns or other types of referential pra uh, phrases with uh, antecedents from the context. So these are some traditional methods, okay, whereby you use linguistic structure and grammar and morphological rules. Okay, subject predicate and those kind of things. Then you can gen, uh, have generators based on query statistics, which combine key terms from the current query and its context to create candidates that match popular queries from historical data or common query patterns. This is where I think this query comes from. What is the height? Mostly people ask in Chicago for Willis Tower. Okay, so this is the case of generators based on query statistics, combining key terms from the current query and its context to create candidates which can match popular queries from historical data. And then you have these generators based on transformer technology such as MUM, which learn to generate sequence of words according to a number of training samples. Okay. So here uh, they make use of transformer technologies to generate these uh, phrases. Okay. Uh, again, they talk about two technologies over here, which are laser tagger and Felix which are suitable for tasks with high overlap between the input and output text are very fast at inference time and are not vulnerable to hallucination, which can come from your transformer models, generating text that is not related to the input text. So you have this issue of hallucination in generator uh, generative models where you could generate some text that is not related to the input text. Okay. Once presented with a query and its context, they can generate a sequence of text edits, basically laser tagger and Felix to transform the input queries into a rephrasing candidate by indicating which portions of the context should be preserved and which word should not be, should be modified. Okay. So these are the two things which use this kind of uh, based on the query and context, it kind of edits the text to transform the input queries so that it can indicate which portions should be preserved and which should be modified. Okay. So once you have these uh, candidates generated, then you have to do some kind of candidate scoring, right? For example, uh, you know, uh, the signals depend on the current query and its context. Is the topic current query similar to the topic of the previous query? Or is it the current query a good standalone query or does it look incomplete? Okay. So these are the things which need to be looked into when you are looking at uh, scoring the candidates. What they say is that uh, the signals generated by models like BERT and MUM, uh, they are significantly improved the performance of this ranker. And uh, this has improved the recall and also reduced the false positives. Okay, that is what uh, they 
mentioned over here okay so in conclusion what they have done over here is that uh, uh, they have described a solution which attempts to resolve contextual queries uh, contextual queries by rephrasing them in order to make them fully answerable in a standalone manner without having to relate to other information during the fulfillment phase so because of this approach what they are saying is that they have improved performance and the benefit of this approach is that it is agnostic to mechanisms that would fulfill the query and thus make it usable as a horizontal layer to be deployed any before any further processing so this can be deployed as a horizontal layer okay so they have adopted a hybrid approach which combines linguistic rules large amount of historical data through logs and ml models okay so this is a combination of different approaches to overall improve this you know uh, reference resolution to get better results okay and they say that uh, so to make multi turn user conversations even less cumbersome google assistant has a continued conversation mode which can be enabled without the need to repeat hey google between each query and this can improve the virtual assistant performance basically so that is what they have mentioned over here so this is quite interesting work related to this work you have this mum transformer which is another blog post over here there is another blog post on uh, your uh, laser uh, tool and another one on uh, laser tagger and another one on the felix okay so i will be putting the links to uh, all the links uh, over here uh, to all these blogs as well as this article on core reference resolution in the description of the video i hope you like this video if you like the video please like share subscribe to the channel see you in another video happy learning